Annyeong. Annyeonghaseyo. Hi, my name is Serin. And Jamie and I, we uploaded our first episode of We Jobo Podcast yesterday. No, it was a day before yesterday. And thankfully, he proposed me to take a kind of vlog first about my lifestyle. So I started considering about the topic. So like, what would it be? And as I speak and use uh, my second language, which is English, pretty much often, for some reasons, such as my boyfriend is an English native speaker, and since he's Korean, isn't that good uh, yet? So <laughs> I'm the one who should speak uh, his language in English. So yeah, for some reasons, I speak English pretty much often, as I said. So I thought it'd be really fun or and interesting if I talk about or share my life speaking English as a native Korean. So today I'm gonna talk about the initial inspiration of me to learn English. So uh, let me start with the general idea of English in Korea and my experience in English. I mean, my personal experience in my life in terms of English. Uh, you might know or not, in Korea, generally, students start to have English class uh, at the age of 10, which means the third grade in our elementary schools. Uh, and the second language class goes on until we graduate our high school for nine years. And it's quite a long period, right? And personally thinking, nine years are not the short time to fully absorb second language and be fluent, I think. But sadly, I recall I recollect my time back in high school or middle school. I could read or I could listen to English, but I could barely write a short essay or talk to foreign people in English. So, uh, like... As I as I remember, uh, speaking and writing in English were the weakest part of my English skill. And actually, the moment I realized that my English skill is just right right to next. Uh, right, right. I'm sorry. Uh, my English skill is just right next to nothing. Was when I was traveling in Europe. I went to Europe when I was in, uh, no, no, I went to Europe, it was like two years ago, yeah, 2015. And before starting that travel, I believed myself to be, you know, able, able to speak a word in front of people and introduce myself and have a, you know, simple conversations with them, like with people who I would meet uh, on the journey, you know. But the fact was totally the opposite. Like, I could still speak, and I could still have some conversation with them, but it was just all about, like, rudimentary things, in very basic things that I already learned in elementary school, not even when I was in high school. So, at that time, I was quite disappointed by myself in the whole education system of Korea. Like, in terms of English, uh, Korean, education system, uh, Korean education system is mainly focused on uh, reading and listening. So, uh, Korean SAT uh, is composed. I mean, the, the the English test in Korean SAT is also composed of just two parts: reading and listening, not speaking or writing. I mean, I it's understandable. I know that, but I I still think that there has there had to be more, uh, like, effective way or effective classes that we could improve or develop our English skills in terms of other things like listening or writing. I mean, I had a native English teacher when I was in high school and it was uh, just one, one teacher. I still remember his name. He was Brian. He was from USA. And uh, I think the class with him was just like twice a week and it's not enough you know it's quite pointless so i thought my english speaking skill would have been better if i had proper uh speaking classes more or you know something regarding uh you know like in like 
being expo being exposed me to like s some experiences regarding speaking more or writing more just as well as well as reading and listening also and the thing that uh i was thinking about my weakness in english was the the fear the fear i had about english like you know we first we don't have that much effective class to learn how to speak and you know i would say and that was kind of backfire which made me learn english harder and practice english harder than before and actually that's why i decided to change my attitude and view on english uh it's it's not just about me but like in general in general many of korean I mean, many of my korean friends they get uh, they get afraid when they have to utilize uh, english or when they have to speak just at least some words in english like when they are talking to foreign when they are talking to foreign people or foreign friends and the thing is we are afraid of making any slight mistakes when we speak in english i think that's the that's the main problem when we start to learn foreign language mis making mistakes i mean we are not native people in that language so it's okay or it's very understandable if we make any uh i mean possible mistakes when we speak or when we use their languages but i think we get afraid of that fact making mistakes because we got so embarrassed we, we get so embarrassed when we when we make something wrong in vocabulary and grammar so i really wanted to change the view i mean the fear on english by myself so first uh i started listing up the, my, my personal reasons like why I have to study English and why I have to improve my English speaking skills because you know without purpose then we easily get lost right so I netted them for me it was just like this meeting diverse people as many as I can uh, this was and still is my main goal of studying English still i really like meeting people and i do enjoy it and if i'm a monolingual person then my whole range of first goal is just in korea right it there's a limit but if i have another way of speaking which means english or other language i mean it could be anything if you want if you if you want to learn french and it could be your uh, another way of speaking and if it if, it could be chinese or german spanish whatever you want to uh, in my case that was english uh, then if i can speak in english other than like just korean then i can broaden that scope of my goal and talk to more people than i would have just using korean so very beneficial i think and i thought at the time too so and also maybe in my case studying abroad is yeah is one of the main reasons that i should be better than before with respect to english uh i don't know like i never have studied abroad before but i always yearned <laughs> to do so i don't know why i think i just it's, it's kind of a little dream you know like studying abroad and making foreign friends that was kind of a little dream when I was younger. And actually, I'm preparing to make it real next year. I mean, studying abroad in the UK. So I hope uh, I can make it real. <laughs> I really hope so. And with that respect, I mean, English is not just a medium that can give me a breath to meet many people in the world, but also it is really important bridge to live in foreign countries especially when we should study right it's about survivor so very important very uh, yeah, very important <laughs> anyway 
I, I mean, with those reasons, I tried to get rid of the fear and the afraidness that I had before about English. I tried, I tried a lot. Uh, the main strategy to get rid of this fear is that making foreign friends. I mean, except for just one Japanese friend, before 2015, I didn't have any foreign friends, just except for her, Japanese friend. And the main idea of this way, this strategy is to face with your fear. I thought the fact that I got nervous when I have to speak in English when I was in Europe, that's because I didn't have enough experience of meeting people and leading a conversation in English. Uh, so, at that time, I downloaded three or four applications on my smartphone uh, that can that that I can have a chatting, you know, with foreign with foreign people who were living in Korea at that time. And sometimes I caught up with some weirdos, you know, but most of the time they didn't reject me, so that I can practice my English speaking and writing. At the same time, you know, I should I I had to type in something that I want to say in English, so it helped me a lot also to improve my writing. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, and I also volunteered. Yeah, it uh, it was kind of language exchange program. I volunteered like a uh, staff at the time. Uh, it's kind of meeting foreign people and Korean people at the same time and you know it was just it, it was just all about language exchange and I met so many good people there so many kind friendly foreign foreign friends there and we still keep in we still keep in touch and then I don't do it now but I had done it for uh, last year one year and you know that really helped me to improve my English skill, uh, you know, in a short time. And I really appreciate it. Like, and I mean, I think the most important part of that volunteering thing was I was that I can't was that I could meet so many good people. So it also, you know, have two benefits like volunteering. So, yeah, that was my second strategy to uh, get rid of my fear in English and the third way of it was to expose myself to English used articles more and more. Uh, I usually use TED Talks or BBC News Service or New York Times and you know sometimes in the articles of New York Times or BBC News I encountered so many words that I haven't heard before I or I haven't listened to before and when I saw those kind of like jargons or terminology I got afraid also but I thought this is just a word you know this is just a word they use daily in daily life and if I really want to study abroad or if I hope to live abroad someday i should know this word because they use this words i mean day by day so uh by doing so i could learn some hard vocabulary as i said like jargons you know some terminology that only technicians or only doctors or lawyers use you know and you know i even got the way to use those words properly in a proper situation so it helped it helped me a lot too. I really, I th and I really think I enjoyed that time too, because uh, as I already said, when I was in high school, I didn't have any like chance or opportunity to have this kind of sources to use English because you know, in Korean high school, English studying is just all about Korean SAT, which means reading and listening not speaking or writing some essay you know so it was kind of hard to get some resources at the time but it was it was really like new to me so i really enjoyed it that's why i uh, i loved this way i mean this strategy to improve my 
English more and more. And I really appreciate that I could find some way. <laughs> But with all these things, I still sometimes feel nervous when I speak in English because I'm still like most of Koreans, you know, I'm still Korean and uh, most of my friends get, get so afraid when they have to speak in English and so do I. I sometimes get nervous. I can't help. It's just, you know, our characteristic, our Korean trait, I would say. But I try not to allow that feeling of embarrassment encroach on me. And the more I try, the better improvement I would get with respect to English speaking or writing in all aspects, all possible aspects that I can, we, we can think about English. And, you know, as you see, I'm still working on it. I mean, English. <laughs> And I know sometimes there would be something that I cannot fully grasp the very meaning some vocabulary or some you know, idioms, some jargons, there could be something that I cannot fully you know, absorb that many into me because of some cultural differences, you know, I know that, but I will not give up, why would I? And accept the limitation and I will try harder. Yeah, that was my story and I think Jamie and I are gonna talk about this topic more, I mean language. Uh, since he's learning Korean cur currently and I'm still learning English, so language or language, language burial or, you know, some topics regarding language, it could be really interesting or fun to talk about, I mean, for both of us. Yeah, and I also <laughs> would teach him some Korean words or some easy sentences, you know, in our podcast. So it would be so much fun. Uh, if you liked my vlog or our previous podcast, just please be our guest. We would we will really appreciate that. So thank you for listening my first vlog. And my name was Sarin. And yeah, have a nice day. Annyeong! Hi, dolphins!